Steve Binns at the launch of DadaFest 2014. Edward Rushton. Standing out onto the Bernabeu. Madrid's ground, in case you're not a... And beating them 9-0. Can you imagine it? Yeah. Bloody hell, if you can imagine that, you're blinder than me. <laughs> now that's what Rushton did, you see. He wrote to George Washington, first president of the land of the free. They've been telling us what to do ever since. He said, well, you've won. He took in 12 pages, and Frank probably knows it off by art and jungles, but I'll tell you my version. He said, you've won. You've beaten the English. Congratulations. Now, he said, are you going to release your 300 slaves? He did not receive a reply. Did you know, boys and girls, that oppression still walks abroad? In the streets of Gaza and Kiev and Ferguson, Missouri and 20 other places, Damascus, Aleppo. Did you know that Rushton would still have to be on guard like he was two centuries ago? when it was Ireland and Poland and England and 20 other places. The man was heroic. He has been underrated and neglected because he was on our side. He was on our side at school, which I did not like any of my schools very much. We had a mythological story that he'd come down one Saturday night in the 1790s and found that the staff were getting melons and marrows and we were getting apples and he swapped over the good stuff from them to us. I don't know whether it was true, but we believed it was. So he takes a job on the slave ships. Promotion was good. Mortality was impressive. Somebody told him you could be a captain at 25. And he wouldn't accept the old myth. He was distrust distrustful of government and its institutions. Take his advice, if you will. He didn't trust any of them much. And they told him, nah, it's like transferring wood or cotton or tobacco and all that. Don't worry about that. You'll be all right. You'll make money. You'll do well. You'll be a captain at 25. No worries. But he helped them. He took food and water. He was saved by one of them. You can't be saved by something that's less than you. You can only be saved by something that is your equal. And when Rush knew that they were his equal, he could not accept the old myth. And if you were out there on a Monday night watching Liverpool or Strictly Come Dancing, I'm only teasing, <laughs> and you wanted someone to come and second your motion about the Russians in Poland or the English in Ireland or the Americans everywhere, Rushton was your man. And he wasn't just in a minority himself. He had two types of opponents, like many of us today, I think, who had his political opponents, which he expected, but also he had to often convince his friends that they should go as far as he went in these matters. And to do that without any sight at all. And here's me with my braille machines in my iPhone, which has nearly been in the garden three times this week, and I suspect will be. What did he have? His memory. Yes, he could get somebody to read to him, but he didn't have any way of taking notes or writing anything down. Braille had not been invented, of course, and he gave himself the best thing anybody can have a wide general knowledge. He knew what was wrong, he knew what was right, he strove to get what was right and to do good, and before we can identify left and right and political systems, what we know, the basic truth of what we know, is that if you were in a hard corner or a hard place, he would stand beside you. I am grateful to the 
recognition that Rushton gets and deserves. And you will find, if you listen to every news bulletin from, today, to, from now until whenever, that he is and what he stands for as relevant today as he was on those windswept platforms two centuries ago. Thank you.